Hello everyone, in this episode of, well, our new distance matching tutorial series, I almost said bite-sized UE5 there, we're going to be doing some basic project setup, we're going to be creating our project and getting some basic movement and camera rotation implemented so that everything's ready for us to jump right into distance matching in the next episode coming out on Monday. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Okay, here I am inside of Unreal Engine 4.26, and I'm just going to create a standard third-person project. I'm going to set it to C++. We'll mainly be using blueprints, but there are a couple of functions that distance matching requires where we'll have to do some C++, and if you aren't familiar with C++, if, or if you don't know it, don't worry, I'll be... Well, when we get to that, I'll provide links to files where you can just copy and paste everything in. So you won't have to have any knowledge of C++ for this course, for this tutorial series. And I don't think we need to start our content, so I'm just going to name this. Um, I'm going to name this distance matching and I'll throw it in uh, almost put it in the wrong folder so now I'm going to create the project and we're gonna do some basic setup you won't have to worry about animations or if you're trying to find animations don't worry about any of that we don't need them yet when we do need animations when we get to that point where we're putting animations in and setting all that up I'll have all the animations that we'll need for this series provided and linked in the description all right Unreal Engine 4 is open so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this third person character or well we've created a C++ project so I'm going to create a new file and we're going to create a new character here, a blueprint character. And let's just name this distance matching. Let's name this Let's do DM underscore for distance matching. So we'll just do DM underscore character blueprint class character BP underscore DM underscore character. Let's open it up. And now the advanced locomotion system has some um, code, um, some blueprint code that is pretty great for handling standard movement. So I'm going to make use of that in this project. There's issues when using a controller and going on the diagonal axis um, that it doesn't always return the correct values and it can mess with some of the calculations. It's no longer in a scale of zero to one and it messes things up and there's fixes for that worked into the advanced locomotion system so we're going to be recreating some of that code here okay so to begin i'm going to get our move right and our move left i'm sorry move forward input and I'm going to create a function and I'm going to name this player movement input. This function is going to have one input and it's going to be a boolean titled is forward axis. And now inside of it, I'm going to have a branch. I'm going to connect is forward axis to it. And for both true and false, I'm going to add movement input. I'm just using control W to duplicate whatever I'm selecting. And now we need a 
couple more functions. We're going to create one called git control forward slash right vector. And we're going to make this a pure function. We're going to git control rotation. We're going to split our struct pin. I'm going to drag off from Z and we're going to get forward. I'm sorry, we're not going to drag off from Z. We're just going to get forward vector. And we're going to split this. And we're going to connect these together. And now we're going to get right vector. We're going to split this and connect these together and now I'm going to add two outputs they're going to be vectors one is going to be the forward vector and one is I spelled forward wrong and one is going to be the right vector going to connect these up and that function is complete we can go back into our player movement input function and now let's get our pure function that we just created we're going to connect these to the world direction vectors and now we're going to create our second pure function and we're going to name it fix diagonal gamepad values it is going to have two inputs it is going to have two outputs we have y in x in Y out, X out, and all four of these are going to be floats. Now for Y in, we're going to drag out into a multiply node. I'm going to bring that into a clamp. the min being negative one and the max being one. And we're going to plug that into Y out. Now from the, now we're going to multiply this by a map range clamped. And the top value is going to be the absolute value of the X input. And range B is going to be 0.6. Outrange A is going to be 1. And outrange B is going to be 1.2. Now we can duplicate this. Put it right underneath. We don't have to change any of the values. We can drag out. Get another absolute value. And we can plug this into our YN. Now we can drag out from this into another multiply. Let's put this in the bottom. And this can go into our XN. And another clamp. Negative one, two, one. And now I'm going to plug this into the X out return value. And now our function is done here. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup because I like, I just like um, to have my stuff organized and easy to read. I'm 
just clamping these to make them a little easier to follow. It's not as much of a tangled mess. So there we go. We can compile, save. We don't really need to compile and save. I just... Um, it's a habit that I've sort of developed, and it's a good one because you are constantly saving, so if anything crashes, you're not going to lose lots of work. Because trust me, work for two hours and then Unreal crashes and it sucks. So, next we're going to drag out our fixed diagonal gamepad input values. I'm going to plug up. X out into there, Y out into there, I mean Y out up here, X out down here. And now we're going to get move right and get move forward. We're going to connect these up, forward to the top one, right to the bottom one. And there we go. We have our movement set up here in our function, but we don't have that function connected to anything, so the character won't move yet. So now we're going to get our player movement input function. We're going to duplicate that. We're going to plug it in once to each of these. And we're just going to tick is forward axis on move forward. We can compile and save that. And now let's go over to our viewport. And for our mesh, let's add a... Oh, I'm trying to add our mannequin up here. Go over here once you have your mesh selected. And let's select SK mannequin. We can... Bring it down to about there, rotate it 90 degrees, and we're not going to worry about an animation blueprint yet. We'll be covering that in a later video. For now we're just trying to get our basic movement and camera set up. So if we, let's see, just delete our standard third person character and bring in our distance matching character. And under the details panel, search possess. We can set auto possessed player to player zero. You can click play and there's no camera. So it'll look a bit weird. You can't move the camera, but if you use your WASD keys, the character will move around. So now let's fix the problem with the camera. Let's go to mesh, we'll have mesh selected add a spring arm and now add a camera underneath the spring arm now we need to take the spring arm and let's just raise it up to be about shoulder height and rotate it 90 degrees compile save and now if we click play there's a camera but we cannot rotate it so what we're going to do is we're going to select the very top or the name of our blueprint and we're just going to search yaw we're going to uncheck use controller rotation yaw and okay it's been a little while since i've set this up so i'll be right back i'm forgetting a step so i'll be right back all right, I'm back and I remember what I forgot and it's some pretty basic standard stuff. Still a thing to forget. We need to get our uh, turn input and our look up input. We can't expect the camera to turn and move if we don't um, program it to. So now let's add controller yaw input and add controller pitch input and for now we'll just connect the axis values and now that we have that connected up 
select the spring arm and check use pawn control rotation, compile, save. And now if we play, our character moves around. Um, well, our camera moves around. And now we might be editing the way the character turns in a at some point down the line. Um, but this will certainly do for now. And we have our character set up. And in the next video, we'll be setting up some of the code for the distance um, predictions for predicting when the character is going to stop, how far away the character stops, that kind of stuff, so that we can get started on actually implementing distance matching. So that video will be out on Monday if everything goes according to plan. So I'll see you all then, and thanks for watching.